Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Kunal, and uh, I'm your uh, physics tutor. And uh, we are actually doing uh, oscillation. And today is our seventh lecture. So, so uh, let me quickly recap the thing. We have done previous classes. We have done some things. So, we actually uh, deal with a system in which uh, two masses and a spring is connected and yahan pe humne time period nikala tha so it will be actually equal to 2 pi root under uh, mu by k where mu is actually reduced right there is k and all we iske humne uh, in general cases jo humne dekhi thi so finally we have to convert uh, those system into this type and then we have to directly write the time period of the coil सो so, अगर आपने स्टार्टिंग से देखा होगा तो हमने जो स्टार्ट करी थी कहां से विद अ सिंगल स्प्रिंग ब्लॉक सिस्टम से जहां पे हमने टाइम पीरियड कैलकुलेट करा था 2 पाई रूट अंडर m बाय k विद द हेल्प ऑफ फोर्स मेथड राइट हमने फोर्स मेथड का इस्तेमाल किया था इसमें हमने f is equal to minus of kx and then we find omega square is equal to something k by m and then we like time period is actually equal to 2 pi by omega so how this actually time uh, time period is equal to 2 pi root under m by k is actually calculated right so right now what i am trying to say is ki we are uh, and then iske baad humne kya kya cheeze kari thi iske baad humne uh, connections of spring dekhe the jahan pe humne do char spring ko uh, ya to series mein ya fir parallel mein connect karke time period ki humne calculation kari thi but the things was ki yahan pe kya tha connection of the spring mein ki our main goal is to convert the system into single spring block system right and then uh, we uh, move to the single spring and two block system and then all right now in today's lecture we are going to discuss and uh, we are actually try to find the uh, time period of oscillator by energy method so let me give the heading here so in today's class we are going to learn uh, uh, to find time period of oscillator time period of oscillator with energy meter right with energy meter right okay so uh, we have to find the time period by energy meter so what are the steps that we have to follow to uh, compute the time period so let me write it here okay so uh, there were some steps that you have to follow so let me write it the step and then we uh, same thing that we apply on a system so there were some steps so step one is that you, you have to uh, write the equations at mean position uh, step two you can say you have to uh, write uh, the total energy of oscillator at displaced position and the third thing is step third what you have to do uh, like uh, there is some e is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy right and in third case what you have to do you have to differentiate the total energy with respect to time right uh let me write it here step four uh actually differentiate uh the total energy with respect to time and equate it with zero and relate the relations between acceleration and displacement acceleration and displacement that means what i'm trying to say is like you have to find like d by dt is exactly equal to d a kinetic energy by dt plus uh, potential energy by dt and you have to equate it to zero right and via this relation you have to uh, find a relation between uh, acceleration and displacement which is something like this and if you find this you can easily calculate the time period because um, um, uh, omega you can find so it will be actually equal to 2 pi by omega okay so this is the thing that you have to uh, do 
the first thing you have to do you have to write the equation at the mean position write the actually total energy of the oscillator at a displaced position and the total energy which is actually equal to kinetic energy and plus potential energy and uh, then what you have to do then you have to do actually just differentiate uh, actually just uh, differentiate the total energy and uh, when you differentiate the total energy and equate it to zero since so then you able to find a relation between acceleration and the displacement right so as you able to find the relation between acceleration and displacement uh, there is something like omega square term you find uh, in relation so uh, you you actually able to calculate the omega so uh, the time period is actually 2 pi by omega so you can easily calculate the time period uh, which is actually 2 pi by omega right so this is actually the uh, energy method to calculate the time period uh, let's start uh, implementing it uh, so let's take the our first system which actually we calculate the time period by force method so our uh, system is like same uh, single spring block so there is mass m this is actually smooth surface this is actually spring constant k and what you have to do you have to write the uh, total energy at displaced position so uh, let me tell you like l naught is the original length there is a displacement in the spring or stretched or the spring is stretched by something the actually original length l naught by x distance so and it has a velocity v like we have to assume that so our total energy is something like uh, kinetic energy plus of potential energy and the kinetic energy is half of mv square and uh, potential energy is nothing but energy by spring u spring which is actually equal to half of kx square right so this is actually our energy now what we have to do we have to just differentiate the total energy with respect to time right what we have to do we have to just differentiate the total energy so just do d by dt so it is actually equal to when we dif start differentiating start differentiate v with v first v as a function of v applying the chain rule here so half m to v and dv by dt is actually a so first try dv by dt next step we gonna write it a so half a 2x and there will be like dx by dt and dx by dt is nothing but v and we have to equate it to zero so half this get cancelled it will be like m v a plus half of get cancelled and there will be like k v x right now here we get m v a is equal to minus of k v x so this get actually cancelled and here we get a is equal to minus of k by m x and as we know from the above relation we get the a as a function of something here and x we, we actually get the relation between acceleration and displacement right where omega square is actually nothing but a by m here because we have to get the relation something like that a minus omega square x right so we have to establish a relation between acceleration and displacement and here we get the relation a is equal to minus of k by m into x where uh, omega square value is actually k by m so here our uh, omega is equal to root under k by m so we all know that time period is nothing but 2 pi by omega so our time period is 2 pi by root under m by k so this is actually uh, we already calculated this system with the help of uh, force method so i just uh, want to uh, show you ki how to implement this step to find the uh, time period of the oscillator with energy method right i hope it will be clear to all of you okay now uh, let's take another, another system which is actually based on the rolling as i'm as i already uh, told you in previous class in next class we are going to discuss about uh, uh, the problem based on rolling so let's start so there is a system actually this is actually question number two this is actually uh, based on 
let me write it here rolling disk which has a uh, mass m and actually radius r so here actually there is a spring and uh, with spring there is a so there is a disk attached to the spring which has spring constant k and this is actually its uh, mean position okay and uh, so you have to find uh, find the time period of the following system right uh, if system is doing pure roll i hope you are uh, aw uh, like aware with the things pure roll in which like velocity of center of mass is equal to uh, vc is equal to r into omega and ac is equal to r into alpha right and the pure roll when uh, spring is stretched by the uh, displacement of x so the spring is stretched by x right so you have to find the time period of the uh, following system so what you have to do actually uh like you can find the time period with the help of force method as well but i think uh applying energy meter here is uh, easy uh, because directly just we have to write the energy at the displaced position and we have to just uh, differentiate with respect to time and equate it to zero so we can easily find the relation between acceleration and the displacement so uh let's do it here let me draw it here the figure so that's this uh, like center of mass is displaced by a displacement of x right x center of mass and v is in this direction so actually v is equal to r omega so omega is in this direction right now what you have to do we have to just write the total energy of the system so what it is actually so let me write it here so total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy <clears throat> now here the kinetic energy is of like two kinds one is actually uh, translational kinetic energy and the second one is like rk rotational kinetic energy uh, in short form we can write tke translational kinetic energy plus rk which is roughly rotational kinetic energy and plus there will be a potential energy right okay so our translation kinetic energy nothing but half m v square here we can write half m velocity of center of mass square half m vc square and plus uh, we have to write the rotational kinetic energy which is actually equal to half i omega square so we all know that moment of inertia of this case mr square by 2 and actually m and r is given so we can write m r square by 2 and uh, omega square so in this case in pure roll actually vc is equal to r omega so we can write here let me write it here here actually vc is equal to r omega and actually half i omega square so omega square can be written as v square by r square so vc square by r square and plus the potential energy which is actually the by spring p by only by spring right so it will be like half k x center of mass square and what we have to find we have to find the relation between acceleration of center of mass and displacement of center of mass here so uh, let me write it here so it will be like d by dt so here we can write a half m 2 vc into ac plus uh, r square r square get cancelled so it will be half m 2 vc ac plus half k 2 xc and vc right and we have to equate it to zero so uh this and first and the second term is actually same so let me erase it so what we will get we will get it from here is like 2 m v c a c uh okay there is something like m by 2 so it will be like 3 by 2 m v c a c 
प्लस ए बी सी एफ सी तो लेट्स इक्वेट फ्रॉम हेयर सो व्हाट विल गेट थ्री बाय टू एम बी सी ए सी इज एक्चुअली इज इक्वल टू ए बी सी एफ सी एंड दिस एंड दिस टर्म गेट कैंसल सो विल गेट ए सी इज इक्वल टू टू के बाय थ्री एम विथ माइनस साइन एंड एक्स सी राइट नाउ now uh, what you have to do it here is uh, okay so uh, here we get the relation between xc and uh, acceleration of center of mass and uh, displacement of center of mass right so now what what we can do this is actually our our omega square here so here our omega square because A is equal to minus omega square x. Actually, we have to reduce it to this equation. So, if, uh, when we compare to this equation to the a square, a is equal to minus omega square x. So, we'll get omega square is equal to two k by three m. And this value, so omega is equal to root under two k by three m. So, our time period is nothing but two pi by omega. So, so we'll get two pi root under three m by two k. So this is actually our time period of the following system, right? So this is actually the easy way. Just uh, nothing you have to think. Just pain chalani hai isme, or just uh, apne liye karna kya hai ki apne just total energy likhni hai at displaced position, and you have to use certain things here because there is actually pure roll is going on. So when pure roll is uh, going on, so we have to use the relation like. Velocity of center of mass is actually is equal to r into omega, and acceleration of center of mass is actually equal to r into alpha. So this is the thing, and we have to write the total energy at displaced position, and then we have to differentiate the total energy with respect to time, and uh, equate it to zero, and we have to find the uh, a relation between acceleration and uh, displacement. So here we act. Uh, Get the relation which is actually equal to a c is equal to minus of three k by two uh, k by three m into x c. So here our omega square is actually equal to two k by three m when we compare it to the a is equal to minus omega square x. So here we'll get omega is equal to root under two k by three m. So our time period is actually two pi by omega. So it was actually equal to two pi root under three m by two k. Right. Ah, uh, I hope it will be clear to all of you. Okay. so uh, these are the actually two method of uh, calculating uh, the time period right now we are actually moving to the we are actually like bahut sare system humne dekh liya like uh, single spring block se start kari thi multiple spring dekh liya fir se two block dekh liya two block one spring dekh liya uske bhi in general cases dekh liye jisme humne reduce to the two block and single spring karna tha fir uske baad energy method seekh liya humne Like how to find the time period by energy method. Now let's uh, try to uh, calculate the time period of uh, some uh, miscellaneous system, right? In in which actually some uh, dynamics is going on. Let me give the heading here. Calculation of time period for a miscellaneous system. Okay. so uh, actually our system is the first system let me draw it here so uh, there is a wall and this is our surface and there is actually another wall and uh, there is our mass m and uh, which is actually attached to the spring and one end of the spring is attached to the mass and other end is actually attached to the wall and uh, there is uh, another mass which is actually uh, of the same mass m and th the surface is actually smooth okay and uh, this mass is actually moving with velocity v actually v not and uh, the distance between these two block is actually given is d right and uh, one more thing is given when uh, this mass collide with uh, the another mass 
so the collision is actually elastic collision that means uh, e is equal to 1 actually given so you have to find the time period of the system so first try to understand ki what is actually time period right so i have told first lecture mein tha. the time period is the time taken by the system to complete one complete oscillation right the time taken by the system to complete one oscillation so uh let me call it as a and this block as b so first सबसे पहले होगा क्या सबसे पहले ये होगा कि ए ब्लॉक इधर से चल रहा है क्योंकि ये तो रेस्ट में है एंड इस पर कोई एक्सटर्नल फोर्स लग नहीं रही है सो दिस ब्लॉक रिमेंस एट रेस्ट जो ए ब्लॉक है ये वी नॉट वेलोसिटी से राइट डायरेक्शन में आ रही है एंड सडनली एट सम टाइम टी डैक्स इट कोलाइड विथ द ब्लॉक बी एंड सिंस द कोलिजन इज इलास्टिक राइट एंड सिंस द कोलिजन इज इलास्टिक सो क्या होगा कि uh this block stops and this block start uh oscillating why because uh collision is elastic and velocity exchange in uh let me note here one thing you actually read this thing in conservation of linear momentum chapter is when when two body of same mass same mass collide under elastic collide under elastically collision elastically then uh, velocities of masses get exchanged right so kya hoti hai ki mass dono masses ki velocities kya hoti hai exchange ho jati hai so this block the when a collide to b then a comes at rest and b start moving with the velocity v not right but usse koi fark nahi padega as we already know when uh, when the single spring block system or uh, start oscillating the time period is actually same 2 pi root under m by k which is total time period but does the system actually uh, complete the whole oscillations or what we have to think about that so first uh, this to mai kahan pe tha sabse pehle yahan se mass aa rahi hai it collide and this mass come at rest and they start uh, oscillating so pehle ye idhar jayega and then start coming back and then again it start going but it comes at rest because there is the mass a is there and the b comes at rest because it elastically again collide with a and now a start moving with the velocity of v not and b comes at rest right so the b block is just uh, oscillate half of its time period right it's not actually complete its oscillation it just do half of its oscillations why because uh, at 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 the distance of d there is actually mass a the block a is present and when b return back and collide with a so actually collision is elastic so both velo so, so the both masses exchange their velocities okay so both masses exchange their velocities and uh, when they exchange their velocity it comes at rest and then it start uh, with the velocity v not again so let me uh, solve it here by actually uh, uh, okay so let me uh, draw the figure again and mark some point here okay so this is actually our mass m moving with velocity v not and this is another mass m which is actually connected to this spring which of spring constant k obviously and this is actually b this is actually a and the distance is actually d and collision is actually elastic okay so this is actually the situation at time t is equal to 0 something time t is equal to t dash ki mai baat kar raha hu and it is actually there is a block of mass m obviously and there is a b block of mass obviously m and it is attached to the there this is actually 
and it already covers the distance d. So actually t dash is equal to nothing but d by v naught, right? Because a uh, time period is actually dis distance by time. A is actually covering the uh, d distance with the velocity v naught. So actually time is nothing but d by v naught. A is there. A is actually covered a d distance. Now let me draw the something time t is equal to t double s, which is actually taken from here, right? So there is actually block A and there is block B, which is actually, uh, this is actually, look at here, if you memorize this diagram, I hope it will be clear to all of you, right? So this is actually t by 4 distance, right? And then this is actually t by 4, t by 4, t by 4, total is t. So actually the block is going uh, right to its mean position. There is the mean position of the block B and it's actually going right to uh, the mean position. So actually the time taken uh, from here to here will be like T by 4. And here the T is actually nothing but 2 pi root under M by K. So 2 pi by 4 root under M by K. And Again, at some time, t is equal to three triple dash. This block again collide. Again collide. This B block, uh, first A block collide to B. Let me write it here. Here collision occur. And uh, A collide to B. And here actually B collide to A. Collision occur. Right. And this is actually, again, it's come, uh, actually returned back to the same position. So it is a app. Again, it's t by 4. Again, 2 pi by 4 root under m by k. Now, since the collision is elastic, I'm again saying since the collision is elastic, block B comes at rest and block A start moving with the velocity. You know, and we all know the distance is actually d. Right? So, at some time again, the A is reached at its initial position. B is actually there, which is actually attached to the spring and spring is attached to the mass M. And discover the D distance and here the T is equal to T4, which is actually is equal to again D by V0, because it's again starting with the velocity V0. So this is actually, if you look at here, first this mass, let me zoom in something, okay. So, uh, this M mass start moving from this initial point and at T is equal to 0, it's uh, actually attached to the wall and start moving with the velocity V0. At something T is equal to T dash, it start, uh, it's actually cover the distance D and collide with the B. That means block A col uh, collide with the block B and the actually collision is actually elastic. So, and the masses of both block are same. So they exchange their velocity. So the time with d by v naught now block b start oscillating, and the total time taken is actually t by two. Overall is like t by two. And now again this time b collide with a. And uh, so uh, again the collision is elastic because e is in, e is equal to one. So uh, the collision elastic. So now again velocity exchange between these masses. So now B comes at rest and A start moving with the velocity V0. And again, the time taken uh, from uh, by the block A to reach the, uh, the other extreme end is again D by V0. So if you have to find the time period of the system, uh, time period of the system, uh, so it, it is actually is equal to uh, just add the all of the time. So T dash plus T double dash plus T triple dash plus T4. So it is actually D by V naught plus 2 pi by 4 root under M by K plus 2 pi by 4 root under M by K and plus again D by V naught. So our actually final answer will be uh, 2D by V naught plus uh, pi root under M by K. Itna second. Right. Uh, I hope it will be clear to all of you. Okay.
now uh let's take the next question here mm -hmm. which is actually again based on uh collision things right so let's take so i hope this question will be uh clear and uh, understanding to all of you okay so let's take the another system uh question two so actually this time uh remove the block actually remove the wall from one side what i'm gonna tell you is there is a block of mass m is actually moving with the velocity v naught there is another block okay and uh, there's a wall right and this time e is equal to zero given that means uh -huh, in elastic collision that means jab dono block uh, collide karegi, so both of them stick together in elastic collision and so you have to find the three things here first is after collision time period of the oscillation after collision you have to not find the time period of the system you have to find the time period of oscillation which is actually doing by this block so let me call it as a block t block and both of same mass so after collision find the time period of oscillation and the second question you have to find maximum speed of the particle during its motion maximum speed of the particle during its and the third thing you have to find amplitude of the oscillation right so these are the three things that uh, okay you have to find right so let's start finding each and every one via using the concept whatever we read till now so the first question you have to find the after collision time period of the oscillations so there is actually single spring block system so actually we all know that the time period is actually 2 pi root under m by k let me write it here m dash because after collision actually let me since collision is inelastic so after collision both of the masses get stick to one another right that means after collision these masses were stick to one together now now you have to find the time period right so the first question now we have actually two mrs and since it is actually a single spring block system so time period is we can directly write 2 pi root under m dash by k where m dash is value is 2m so it will be actually equal to 2 root 2 pi root under m by k right this is actually our time period now in second question we have to find the maximum speed of the particle during its motion okay so let's uh, apply here the angular applying angular momentum conservation right so when you apply the angular momentum conservation here so it's something like m a v a is equal to m a plus m b into something common velocity because both of the mass get stick to one another so now the both of the mass is moving with the same velocity right so which is actually v max at mean position this is actually the mean position of the system this is actually the mean position of the system and we all know that the maximum velocity is at mean position only so uh mass is m actually velocity of a is initially is actually v naught given so m into v naught and it is actually equal to m a plus m b so both of the same mass so 2m into v max so actually v max is equal to v naught by 2 so this is our actually maximum velocity right the first thing we have to find the time period we already calculated exactly simple because both mass get stick to one another so it will be like just masses get 2m 
and everything remains same and you have to just apply for the uh, time the formula for the time period of the single block mass system so it will be like 2 pi uh, root under m by k and here m value is 2m so it will be like 2 root 2 pi root under m by k and in the last we have to find the amplitude of the oscillations right so uh, what is the actually amplitude so there is a way to find the amplitude of the system so let me write it here uh, we can do one thing just do you uh, applying energy conservation because there is no external force since there is a no external force on the system next no external force applied on the system so we can apply the conservation of uh, mechanical energy here right so uh, initial energy is equal to final energy so initially we have actually half m v naught per square which is actually kinetic energy and no potential energy here right no potential energy is actually here then finally uh, sorry uh, what I'm going to do here is actually we have the velocity is v naught by 2 and mass is 2m so half m v naught square by 4 and it is actually equal to half of kx square that means kinetic energy is equal to potential energy because look at here here is the energy by 2m block and it has actually velocity v naught by 2 after that, after some moment, it has V is equal to 0. And this is actually its mean position. So this is the actually the X max, which is actually the amplitude. So we can write X max here or half, uh, sorry, V naught square by 4 is equal to half K A square. So this get cancelled V naught by 2 K right and there is actually m as well and v not a square actually so it will be like a square so here our amplitude is nothing but uh, v not root under actually there is four so okay v not by two root under m by k meter or yeah, whatever it is in si unit so this is our actually amplitude I hope this will be clear to all of you. So, I hope that is enough for today's. In tomorrow's class, we are going to start uh, the our new topic, which is actually termed as angular oscillations. Like whatever right now we are talking about the oscillations or simple harmonic motions, which is actually in linear way, right? Like our system is actually uh, linearly oscillates. But what about like simple pendulum? Jo humne first lecture mein discuss kari di. So ye kya ho ye to angular oscillations ho na? Something like this. Theta is there. So this is actually example of angular oscillation. So we are uh, by tomorrow lecture we are going to discuss the angular oscillations kind of thing. So that's all for today. Thank you. Keep practicing the question. I hope this question is actually important and clear to all of you. Thank you.